Hello everybody, Robin Dean here for TheWritingObsession.com. In this video, I'm going to go over how to configure and use the Ride With GPS smartphone app. To begin, let's assume that you've been to RideWithGPS.com on your laptop or desktop computer, you have an account there, and you've created a route that you would like to ride with turn-by-turn -turn directions. Let's get right to it. The first thing you're going to want to view is your library of rides and routes whether they're online or offline. So we'll tap library here. And the first thing it shows us are rides. Rides are places we've already ridden. The app tends to record our riding as we go and then gives us the option to save it later. In this video, that's not our objective. Our goal here is to load a route and then tell it to give us turn by turn directions as we go about it. And all of that is located here under the routes tab. Assuming we have a pretty good signal, we could tap any one of these from the list and then hit the navigate button to get things started. However, if like me, you're out in the rural nowheresville, you're going to want to have some of these offline. To save one of your custom routes from the list for offline use, you're going to want to tap the three dots next to the name and icon and select download. Depending on the size of the route, your connection speed or Wi-Fi signal, this might take a little bit. Once finished, it'll appear under the Offline tab, along with any others you've already downloaded. Now, you don't necessarily have to download a route to Offline mode to be able to ride it, even if you don't have cell or data signal. Basically, if you don't want to download it, you can just tap the name or icon, and then hit the Navigate button. The difference is you might not see any of the map tiles around the route to show you the terrain. Instead, you would just see a blank screen with a line on it, and it would still give you turn-by-turn -turn directions that are fairly accurate. At any rate, I've downloaded some routes that I like to ride in this area regularly, so I'm going to tap the Offline tab. And with a roll of the dice, I figure eh, I'll ride the Wisconsin Driftless Double Helix route. From this tab, I could just hit Navigate, and that would get things started. The only problem is I'm not at the start point yet. So the first thing I'm going to do is tap the icon or the name of the route. And that's going to load it up in my viewport. So here's the route that I want to ride. Let's say I want to ride it from start to finish. I turn on my phone's GPS antenna. And then just to show you where I'm currently located, I'm a ways away from where the route actually begins. Sidebar, you can use two thumbs on the screen to zoom in, out, or turn the compass of the viewport. So here I am, up near Buena Vista, apparently, west of Lone Rock. And my start point is in lovely Mount Horeb, where there's good food, decent beer, and a lot of troll dolls. So this being my start point, I first need to get to there. Ride with GPS isn't designed to navigate you to the start point by itself. Instead, what you do is you press the three dots to the top right of your map and select Navigate to Start. When you tap Navigate to Start, it's going to open up your default navigation smartphone app and take you through the motions to get you to where you want to be. Once there, I'll tap the Navigate button and it'll start giving me turn-by-turn -turn directions from start to finish. That stated, I might not necessarily want to do that. So maybe I'll just take 14 into Lone Rock, cross the river here, pick up 130, ride the route backwards without hitting Navigate yet, until I get to what appears to be County Road I. And now I'll hit the Navigate button. Assuming I'm on route, it'll immediately start giving me turn-by-turn -turn directions. If, however, I were to turn this on before I were on the route, example, if I were coming from Spring Street here, but I had already hit the Navigate button, it would probably be making all kinds of noise about you're off route, no details beyond that, and that's fine, so long as I know where the route is. Once I reach that red line, though, it'll stay in navigation mode and immediately make a pleasant dinging noise and begin giving me instructions accordingly. And just like that, it would appear that I am way off route. Which is fine, since I'm standing in my kitchen. At any rate, let's assume I've been riding for however many miles the route entails, and it's time for me to end this thing. If I don't end it, it's going to keep recording... Till I come back to it and discover a giant bowl of red spaghetti on my screen. 
No big deal, but then I have to delete it first. Here's how we end this. Note the pause button. Press and hold that with your thumb. Now you can hit finish navigation or resume. And this is where it gives you the option to save your entire ride, which can be kind of cool. Maybe you were at a track day and you wanted to see your fastest lap. It shows you that kind of information. But in this case, again, I'm just standing next to my toaster oven. I think I don't need to see this again. So I'm going to press on the screen anywhere but the save button and drag upward. So the delete appears. Now I'm going to tap delete. I'm going to hit OK. No big deal. Easy peasy. Now let's imagine for a second that we're still riding. And the voice navigation is somehow annoying. Maybe it's telling us too much. Maybe we would prefer to hear our directions in kilometers. Maybe we don't want to hear any directions at all. If you're new to the app, adjusting such settings might be a little bit confusing. Because you would expect to be able to find them on any screen, but that's not the case. To adjust the master settings, you have to be on the Home tab. So let's tap that. And then take note of the gear icon to the top left. Here we have the master list of anything we'd like to adjust to suit our personal preferences. If I tap on navigation, you can see I have a lot of things checked off. That's because this app is one of our resources for our commercial motorcycle tours. And I like to remain as well informed as possible. Handlebar mode is also useful. It lets you configure whether or not you'd like the screen to wake up to show you an upcoming turn. There's also offline mode if you'd like the app to avoid using data. And that's about it. The RideWood GPS app is pretty handy. All of its most robust features are pretty easy to access. Once you get to know the settings, you can fine tune them to best suit your needs. It's reliable both online and off, offering the best GUI I've seen yet. For the TheRidingObsession.com, I'm Robin Dean. Safe travels, everyone. Yeah, max speed 130 miles per hour. Yeah, I might be able to do better.